Hello guys, it's Ali here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today marks the completion of two weeks since I got my hair transplant done and in today's video I'll be discussing the progress from day 11 to day 14 and I'll share photos of each day with you guys. And I'll also discuss about the method of removing scabs from your hairs when they develop and how to put oil in your hair. And in the last part of the video, I'll talk about the medications to take and all the do's and the don'ts that are particular to this period. So let's get started. So guys, here's the picture from day 11. And um, as you might have noticed in the previous pictures that I posted in uh, the last videos, that initially the scabs that were formed on my head were red in color and uh, uh, firm in consistency. But uh, most of these scabs washed away after a scab scrubbing head wash on day 8 in the hair transplant center. But as you can see starting from day 11, you can appreciate in this picture a lot of whitish colored scabs on my head. These are actually very soft. And uh, I know this picture is not very soothing to see because of the presence of a lot of whitish colored material on my head. But believe me, this picture was taken after two to three wash of shampooing. And uh, lots of scabs were washed away, but still few of them stayed on my head. Uh, if uh, you zoom in on the picture, you can still appreciate uh, the red scabs in a uh, uh, few parts of my head. And despite of the presence of either type of scabs, I did not have any itching sensation. So let's have a look at the donor area now. So as you can appreciate in this picture, that donor area has healed pretty much well. And the hairs in this area are blending well with the surrounding hairs. So after noticing lots of scabs on my head uh, uh, that were not going away, even with three washes, I got very scared. So I got in contact with my surgeon and he advised me that the scabbing process is a part of uh, a natural healing process. But he also said that these scabs are not at all good for your hair growth as it creates a hostile environment for the newly transplanted hair. So uh, I'm going to show or tell you guys about uh, how he advised me to get rid of those scabs. So um, initially I got a lukewarm water uh, in a mug and pour a couple of mugs of lukewarm water in the front of the head so to make this area completely wet. Once this area was completely wet, I poured a bit of shampoo in that mug and again pour a bit of lukewarm water and make foam of it. So once I had uh, a huge amount of foam, so I took the foam from the mug and apply by gentle tapping in the front of my head, that's the recipient area. So once this area was completely covered with foam, I took a gauze. A gauze piece is usually available in every medical store. I folded this gauze piece and um, get it into a square shape and uh, then I um, pour some lukewarm water on this gauze and uh, uh, then I reopen the gauze and put some shampoo between these layers. And then I close it and I did a gentle tapping so there was a foam formation in this gauze as well. So once I had a foam formation in this gauze, I took this gauze and start gentle stroking from the top to the bottom of my recipient area. So I kept doing the gentle stroking and uh, gentle scrubbing of this area and the scabs started to came off. So once I was done with the first stroking, I then took a, a new gauze, a fresh gauze, and then I dip it in the lukewarm water and the foam uh, that I formed with the shampoo with it. So I soaked in it and then with the second stroking, I just performed a gentle circular motion and this really helped for the scabs to come off. So once I was done doing this in a whole of the area, I took the lukewarm water and pour it again on my front of the area for a couple of times till all the shampoo went away. And you will see in the pictures uh, uh, on the day 12 that uh, how well this procedure actually worked. Although I'll be really very honest with you guys that in doing this process, there was some loss of hair. So. Again, I got a bit anxious and uh, I did a little research of my own. I saw a couple of videos and went through a couple of articles that does this mean that I lost my uh, newly transplanted hair that were lost during the scrubbing process. But uh, uh, later on, I concluded that this, this is not the case. Um, actually, the, the newly transplanted hairs are embedded deep within the scalp. 
and they are usually not res uh, they usually do not come out with uh, this gentle scrubbing and uh, after 48 to 72 hours uh, of undergoing hair transplantation these are strongly embedded within the scalp and only a surgical instrument can remove your graft so whatever hairs are coming off with your scalps are not actual hair graft that were placed in your hair it's just the uh, superficial part of the hair so let's have a look at the picture of day 12 now so guys as you can see that there is a very good growth of hair in the donor area and uh, when we have a closer look we can also appreciate that there are some small hairs sprouting out as well plus uh, the punch marks that were evident uh, after the surgery have totally disappeared now the recipient area looks way more cleaner today after giving it a good scrub wash with the help of a gauze and all the scabs are washed off so donor area looks pretty neat and clean on day 13 as well now if we have a look at the recipient area you may say that on the top boundary in the center of the recipient area that there are less hairs in this part as compared to rest of the recipient area now this may be because of the reason that this area has suffered a greater loss of hairs when i was scrubbing to take off the scabs but if we have a closer look we can still see small tiny hairs coming out in this area as well which is a really very good sign So this is how the back of my head looks like on day 14. As you can see, there are small scattered areas of redness in this region, but uh, nothing to worry about. This all appears as a part of the normal healing process. I've posted this picture to just to show you guys how my hairline looks like from the front. And this is the side view. I have deliberately taken the pictures today after putting oil on my head, just to give you guys an idea of how soaked I am keeping my hairs in oil. This has few advantages. This oil not only prevents scabbing, dryness and dandruff from developing, but it also promotes growth of the hair and makes the hair thicker. So I just show you the progress of my hair transplant in terms of pictures. So now have a look uh, uh, in the video as well. So I'll try to come near close and I hope I can show you uh, the hairline. I think my surgeon did a really good job making this hairline and I really like it. I hope uh, I like it when the hair grows bigger as well. There are still some scabs uh, on the back of uh, uh, the recipient area. Uh, they should be coming off in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the hair looks a bit shiny it's just because of the oil. Let's just talk about the pain. Does it still hurt? Yes, uh, there is a, a bit of pain uh, still there, uh, both in the recipient area and in the donor area as well. But on the back of the head, is a little bit more uncomfortable at the moment. Uh, this is probably because uh, uh, there are certain nerve endings that get damaged during the procedure. And the pain is not there uh, if I'm not touching my head, but uh, it's a bit uncomfortable when uh, actually you're washing your head, particularly from the back of the head, when you're applying shampoo or pouring water and uh, trying to get the shampoo out of the hair, it hurts a little bit. Now in terms of swelling, as you can see, uh, there is none remaining swelling, not even on the front of the head, nor in the back of the head as well. So now just talk about uh, uh, the good things that comes up with the day 11. That's the uplifting of certain restrictions. In terms of lifting up of the restrictions, now you're allowed to sleep on your side. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, you can uh, carry on with your exercise, you can lift weight, you can wear a t-shirt as well. and. Um, you can wear a soft cap like beanie or a surgical cap, although um, from my transplant center the instructions were that I can uh, wear the normal cap as well, but I'm trying to avoid it for at least uh, completion of 20 days. So I'm just wearing beanies or a soft cloth uh, surgical cap at the moment. So I stayed at home uh, till day 10, but I rejoined uh, uh, my job from day 11 as well. And you're not advised to uh, wear any caps or hat or cover your head when you're going out. Apart from uh, if you're going out in harsh sunlight, you should cover your head for at least three months. But of course, uh, with your donor area not being fully covered with the hair, it feels awkward to go out without covering your head. 
the day 14 marks end of daily head washing as well uh, you can now wash your head on every alternate or every uh, three days whatever you like so medication wise I'm just taking a multivitamin supplement and I started taking those supplements from day 11 and uh, any multivitamin supplement that contains specially the vitamin B complex and biotin you should go for it and you should be taking these supplements for at least three to six months um, in terms of oil I'm using uh, almond oil and the coconut oil on alternate day basis in terms of method of oiling you can apply oil uh, to your head apart from uh, your newly transplanted hair in a normal manner um, for the transplanted hair you should take uh, a bit of uh, oil in your uh, palm and you can dip your couple of fingers and you can gently tap your uh, recipient area with the oil and once it's tapped you can just do a bit of small gentle movement or gentle circular movement on your recipient area to spread uh, that oil as well so that's it for today hope you like my video if you like my video please subscribe my channel so you can get updates of my new videos uh, take care guys stay safe